All right, so we're going to this week talk about uh, wave propagation. So we'll start with the example of waves on a string. So I've got an app here to show you <clears throat> where I have a, a string that's attached to a wall on the right and has a free end on the left that I'm going to oscillate up and down uh, to make a wave. So let me just show you that. Oops. I want to reset this and have the frequency be higher. Okay, there we go. And a little less tension maybe too. Okay, so there we go. So ignore, once it gets to the other side, it reflects. And we're going to learn how that works too later in the week, but let's ignore that for now. I'm just interested in this wave pattern that starts to propagate to the right because I'm moving the string up and down. Okay, so I want to study how that happens. Um, so this string is under tension, and so there are tension forces along the string that help propagate this wave pattern. But an important point to make right away is that if I look, there are red dots all along this string, and try to follow the motion of one of the red dots. And what you'll see is that it just goes up and down. Okay, so each little bit of the string doesn't move to the right or to the left, it just moves up and down, um, and it's not the string itself that moves towards the right, but it's the pattern that moves to the right, and it's transmitted by the tension force. Okay, so let's write a mathematical equation that describes that motion. All right, so let's consider uh, now what I'll call, we're going to derive what's called the wave equation. And we're going to consider this rope, okay, so we have a rope or a string that's attached to the wall maybe over here and held taut by something, you know, imagine, try this at home, take a piece of string, tie it to a doorknob, hold it taut, and then pluck one end. So you just pluck it or move it up and down as the app showed, and what will happen is this, you'll generate a pattern as you move it up and down that pot will propagate away from you to the right, okay? Now I'm gonna consider the motion of a bit of the string. Now remember, as I said before, the string itself does not move to the right, okay? Um, it moves up and down only, at least in uh, in the model that we're going to use. Certainly, you can execute a motion at the end of the string that will push it to the right. But if you imagine just moving it up and down, um, what happens is that up and down motion at one end of the string gets transferred to neighboring pieces of string by the tension force. And we consider the vertical up and down motion of each little bit of the string. And we want to see what happens. Um, so we'll define this direction to be the x direction and this direction to be the y direction. Okay. So let's consider this bit of bent string right here. So let me redraw it down here. So imagine I have this string. Okay, here's where it was before I um, before it was perturbed away from the origin. Um, uh, I'll call again this direction is Y, so I can label um, and this direction is X. So the position of each bit of string here is given, uh, basically I can describe that position uh, by giving Y as a function of X. Okay, So that I'll show, uh, describe the shape of the string. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of the string right here. It's going to be delta X wide. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call this location x and this location x plus delta x. Okay, now there's a tension force acting all along this string, even when I perturb it. And the way that force works is it acts in both directions um, on each bit of the string. But when the string is bent, the tension force acts along the, the tangent to the string. Okay, so if I look at the location x, there's a force. It's not very straight, but it acts kind of in this direction. And here there's a force that acts maybe like that. Okay? And I could probably exacerbate this a little bit more to make it clear, so let me do that. Okay? So this force kind of acts like that here, and this acts like that. Okay? Now what I'm trying to indicate is that these two uh, forces that act on either side of this bit of string are not aligned with each other. So there, because the string is bent, there's a slight difference in the direction along which these forces act. And what that results in is a net force that will be in the vertical direction. Okay, so we're going to find there's a force on this bit of string in this situation because of the tension in the rope that tends to want to restore it back to where it was um, before, which is down here. Okay. Now, what I want to do is calculate that force and uh, write an equation of motion for this little bit of string. Okay? All right, so I tell you what, let me draw it one more time. Let me take my bit of string here. 
Okay, and I'll just draw it like that. Okay, and here's x, and here's x plus delta x, and I have a tension here and a tension there. And what I'm going to do is define angles here relative to um, horizontal for these forces. Okay, so this is angle theta. We'll call it theta 2. And this one will be theta 1. Okay, and again, this little bit of string here, I should color it red, um, is uh, um, acted on by a force in the vertical direction. So I'm worried about the vertical components of these forces, which are here. Okay, so I'll call this one F1 call this one F2, um, and so those two forces act on either side of this bit of string. And so F1 will just be um, tension, um, it, it's in the uh, downward direction, so minus T times sine of theta 1, uh, and then this force on the other side, F2, will be T sine theta Two. Now, what we'll do is we'll make a small angle approximation. Um, what that amounts to, so we'll assume theta 1 and theta 2 are small, what that amounts to is we don't uh, perturb the string too much. We don't uh, make it bend it too much. Okay, so you just barely pluck it, much, much like you would do for a guitar string. You just barely grab it and let it go, and you get a wave that propagates, and it's low amplitude. You can barely see it, but it, the wave is... Um, uh, basically bending the string, um, but we'll assume that the, the angle of the bend is small, and then we can use small angle formulas for sine. This becomes minus t times theta 1, and this is, becomes approximately t times theta 2, remembering that sine theta is approximately theta for small angles. Um, and the term we're ignoring, of course, that's from a Taylor expansion. And the next term in the series goes like theta cubed. Okay, so for very small values of theta, um, theta one um, uh, for theta, uh, we can ignore the theta cube uh, contribution. All right. So the net force on this um, on this string piece, I'm going to have to go to the next page. The net force then uh, will be t times. Uh, theta 2 minus theta 1. Okay. Now, um, I will assert to you here, but not prove, that I can relate um, the uh, angle theta, um, so let's say theta 2, can be shown to be uh, proportional to, to be equal to the slope of the string at the location of interest. So this is going to be at position x. Okay? And hopefully that um, I can uh, hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay? Because the um, the angle that this, the tangent of the string makes to the horizontal should be proportional to the slope of the the, the string at that location. Um, so if that's true, and again, I haven't proven it to you, I'm just waving my hands, um, then the net force is going to be t times dy dx at the location, um, oops, sorry, this should be x plus delta x if I, if I chose theta 2, because that's the, the location of the, of the angle theta 2 is at x plus delta x. So this is x plus delta x minus um, dy dx evaluated at x. So this is theta 2 minus theta 1. Okay. Now, um, this quantity here looks a lot like... Um, a, a second derivative um, in a finite difference uh, approximation. So just to remind you, oops, didn't mean to do that. Just to remind you, if I have, <clears throat> if I consider y at x plus delta x minus y at x over delta x, and I take the limit where delta x goes to zero, this becomes the derivative. Okay, so what I have above here is a similar thing, but instead of y, I have dy dx evaluated at these two points. So um, I will argue that if I take the limit of 
um, delta x goes to 0, which I'm going to leave it explicit here because it's going to cancel out later on. This is going to be the same as delta x times d squared y dx squared. Okay? All right, and I had to put the delta x there because I didn't have a divided by delta x um, in the expression above to equate it to dy dx, uh, d squared y dx squared. All right, so what I end up with is that the net force in the vertical direction on this little bit of string is proportional to the second derivative. Okay, and, and hopefully again this makes physical sense because the second derivative tells you the curvature, okay, of the of the string. So if I imagine now, let me draw it. This is y. This is x. Let's imagine that I have um, a string that has a shape like this, and it's under tension. Um, this is a lot like a, a bow string from a bow and arrow, right? So it's as if the uh, you know, you're putting your arrow here, okay, and you're pulling the string back. Um, the arrow is going to be shot in this direction. So basically, when I curve, when I have a positive curvature like this, um, it's going to tend to force things vertically upward to try to, again, relax back to the original shape of the string before I pulled it. Um, and so the curvature of the uh, of the string, d squared y dx squared, is uh, tells you the strength of the force. Okay, of course it's also proportional to the tensions. If I have a, a very non-taut bowstring, it's not going to shoot the arrow very well. But if it's very taut, as I pull it back and establish this curvature, it can give the, the arrow uh, quite a force and send it on its way. Okay, <clears throat> alright, so now what I want to do is use this force to calculate the motion of a little bit of the string. Okay. All right, and so to do that, I need, I'm going to write f equals ma, but I need to know what m of the little bit of string is. Okay, to do that, um, to calculate that, I'm going to define mu, which is going to be the mass per unit length of the on the string. Okay. So with that, I can write that the mass of my little bit of string delta x is mu times delta x, and therefore, um, my equation of motion, and again, I'm worried about vertical motion of the little bit of string. The string just moves up and down as the pattern passes by. Um, so I have mu delta x, that's m, times a, which is going to be d squared y, because it's vertical motion, dt squared. Um, that's going to equal the net force, which is t delta x d squared y dx squared. Okay, and I can divide out the delta x's, and I can write the equation like this, d squared y dt squared minus t over mu d squared y dx squared equals zero. Okay, and this equation has the form uh, of, of an equation we call a wave equation. Um, it describes the propagation of patterns. Uh, in, the, in this case, it, the pattern propagates in the x direction, and the speed at which the pattern propagates is here. This is v squared for that pattern propagation speed. So v goes like root t over mu. Okay, and again, that's not the speed of the rope. That's the speed of the pattern. The rope moves up and down vertically, and it can have a variety of speeds. Okay, and we'll, we'll discuss the connection between the speed of the actual rope versus the speed of the pattern, which is root t over mu. Um, let me stop here. I'll talk more about the physics in class.